Hey, this is Jeff Komar with Avid Pro Audio once again. We're continuing to talk about the new I.O. setup in Pro Tools 9. And in this module, I want to look at uh, some more advanced options, uh, including surround and uh, translating uh, multi-channel paths and that kind of thing. So let's dig in here. And uh, I'm going to start by opening up the I.O. setup. And I've actually intentionally blown away all of my paths. Now, the sessions overwrite current I.O. setup when opened is currently checked because I want to reproduce that legacy behavior. And this is not the way to do this, but I wanna show you what happens when we do it. So let's hit okay, and let's open up an old session. Go to IO setup, and let's look at our inputs. Now, there's a lot of garbage in here. Um, we've got 96 IOs that are not labeled very well. Three different interfaces existed when this session was created. Uh, if we look at the outputs, most of this is really useless too. Um, output one, two, looks like it was either a D control or D command, because it's using the one five format. And then buses are equally ugly, okay? So what I would propose to do is I'm going to hit cancel. I'm going to close the session. We're going to recreate our IO setup, set it up correctly, give ourselves all the resources we possibly need, reopen the session, and show you the benefit, okay? So let's go back to IO. And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm actually going to blow away everything on all these tabs, okay? These are pretty much useless labels, right? And there's no danger right now because I don't have a session open. If you have a session open, you can lose, uh, if you change those assignments, you delete assignments, you can lose automation, and we don't want to do that. So no sessions open, Pro Tools is open, and I'm going to create my paths. Now, inputs, again, um, just click default, and you can get your basic uh, numerical layout. Let's go to outputs. Now, I want to be able to work in stereo. I want to be able to work in surround. I want to be able to work on music sessions, post sessions, do anything from one I.O. setting. So to do that, uh, I'm going to first, personally, I like to work with Simpty Path Order. And that just is the arrangement of the chiclets. So I'm going to choose that. I'm going to now click New Path and create a new 5-1 path. We'll call Mix. Okay, and I'm also going to say add default channel assignments. So there we go. There's our primary path. While we're in here, we'll add a couple cues. Give me two stereo cues, and we're going to just route those to our digital I.O. Okay, cool. Now, again, back in buses, you can see Pro Tools has created those paths for us, Mix, Q1, and Q2. If we expand Mix, you can see it's made every subpath available that I really need. I've got LCR, I've got Stereo, 5051, um, everything that I possibly need. And it's mapped it to that primary 51 Mix path, right? Which is great. The cool thing is that Pro Tools will translate those path orders automatically. You can see that this output bus, Mix, is in film order right? But it's mapping to that output we just created, which if you remember was in SMPTE order. So it's smart enough to know how to do that. Sessions overwrite current IO setup when opened is not checked, right? Which is really important. I want to preserve this setup that I've just created. So I'm going to hit OK. Now we're going to go and reopen that session. OK, back to IO. Now the cool thing is here, if we look at inputs first, our inputs are preserved numerically, right? Our outputs are exactly what we just defined. Pro Tools has simply created output buses for all of those output paths that existed in a legacy session. So you can see output 1, 2 has been automatically mapped to mix, which is 5, 1, but it knows to use the left and right component of that automatically. So it's pretty smart. Now these are remnants of an old session, which are really useless. These are ghost references to a 96 IO. I'm going to delete those. These arbitrary labeled buses, I'm going to get rid of those as well. Okay. And uh, I can do that safely. Now, while we're in here, Pro Tools 9 has changed the way that you can import and export. And now the import options are based on the particular pane that you're looking at. So I'm currently looking at buses. So if I do an import, it's only going to affect buses. Let's click on import settings. And I'm going to import an IO setup that I saved previously um, from a music template called music.pio. I'm going to hit OK and open. And it says delete existing unused paths. I'm going to say no. And now from that, you can see only the buses came in. And part of that, we've got a drum submaster, bass, guitars, keys, uh, vox, background vox, submaster, and master. And if we take a look at these, each one of these has a 5.1 component, 5.0, LCR, stereo, etc. Right? So now if we'd like to, we can click on master, and I can map that to the 5.1 output path called mix, right? 
So let's just click on mapping map. Let's just click on mapping to output and sort those. Now the existing session is feeding out output one two, which is stereo, which is going to mix, which is basically the left right component of that five one. And I also now have a master output path, which is feeding mix five one, which is an actual five one path. So now not only do I have the original output output one two, which is stereo, feeding my primary output path mix, but now I have a five dot one path that I can assign to which is also mapped to mix 5.1. So let's hit OK. And um, in our session, let's take a look at the background vocal sub in here. And um, currently we are assigned output 1.2, you can see is mapped to mix, and that is a stereo path. Let's say we want to repurpose this session and actually start mixing and surround. All I have to do is go up here and assign to master, which is now mapped to mix, and that's a 5.1 path. And I can start mixing, and uh, I have tons of flexibility.